Hey everyone, welcome back to AWM Insights. It's your Power 3, two CPWAs and a CFA. We are Eric, Brandon, and Justin, and it is Black Friday. We had a fantastic Thanksgiving day yesterday. Actually, not even that eating, eating that much turkey because my brother over there, uh, for those listeners that don't know, does not eat meat. So that's the fun fact. But the fun fact of the week is Dow, 30,000. What do you guys got on that? Well, thanks for the low blow there. But, uh, you know, the most important uh, ingredient to a good Thanksgiving, we all know, is the wine. So we had plenty of that flowing. That's why we had to do take two to get this thing started. Eric couldn't get the words out of his mouth. Uh, but we'll jump into the Dow, th- uh, you know, 30,000. Wow, what a week. Um, I don't know. We we could hit on it again this week. How you timing the markets just, you know, really isn't the way to go. I mean, we had uh, the panic, obviously, with the corona crash or, earlier in the year. But now we're sitting uh, all time highs all the way across Dow, S&P, uh, NASDAQ. So I think, you know, it's kind of a, we've been beating this drum for a little while, but trying to trying to time this thing proven to be pretty difficult. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else this year has underscored a lot of those those tenants or those core principles of investing. And then I would I would just highlight, I think it, it is only natural for people to ask, OK, is now the time to get in when market markets are at record highs? I mean, record highs happen time and time and time again. They're great news news items. And I think at this point, it's great to, to underscore you can't predict the future. And from our standpoint, markets do always have a, a positive expected return over an appropriate time horizon, right? You can't say that, hey, markets are going to be positive over the next week, month, or even year with any great certainty. Um, but if you're putting money into the equity markets at these valuations, you should be doing so expecting to keep it invested over a long period of time. Five plus years you know, is a good place to start, but it, it's also specific to your unique unique situation. Then something we hit on last week, uh, the one free lunch in investing, diversification, right? We're talking about the US markets primarily here. Um, the rest of the, the global stock markets have had a fantastic month. It's that they're actually on pace to, to turn in their best month ever, which is a pretty uh, amazing statistic. But it's not like they're hitting record highs like the NASDAQ and, and Dow have. And even over the last 10 years or so, they've, they've trailed the US market. So you know, we're, we're definitely believers in diversification, globally diversified for that matter. And, and having that exposure kind of helps you stomach um, staying, staying to the plan, sticking with your plan and, and investing over the, the long haul. And diversification being a core principle, we talk ad nauseum uh, on this podcast about control what you can control and you're in tax planning, right? One of the other uh, core tenants for us here at AWM is, is that financial structure beats portfolio every single time. And so later in the podcast, we're going to get back to what is it that you should be controlling and what are the main drivers of returns. Uh, but before we get to that, one of the things I wanted to hit on was just these expectations. If you're reading a lot of the typical financial news right now, we're talking about uh were consumers actually outspending as much money as we expected? How are unemployment doing? Can you guys share a little bit of, of how these expectations should go into making decisions on the investment portfolio? Sure. So it, it's fair to say all expectations you read about in the financial press or the press for that matter are generally already priced into the market in one way, shape or form. So you know, Eric, you highlighted Black Fridays today. Uh, we're, we're recording this on Friday after Thanksgiving. And so the expectations are already really there in the market. If if reality is different from expectation, when we get some more detailed metrics, you know, in the next couple of days, uh, these things all happen so fast now, um, the markets react in real time to that information. Same thing on the jobs front. Um you know, we we had our second week of, of slightly higher unemployment claims, which is not not a great statistic, but do keep in mind those statistics are pretty noisy to begin with. And then going back to the fact that that as that data comes out, markets are reacting in real time, basically, to to digest that new information, whether it's different than expectations or not, and and price the market accordingly. Yeah, I think, Eric, the other part about that you hit on was financial structure and can't underemphasize that 
enough right now. I mean, there's a lot of talk out there. You know, what can we expect going forward for returns? And and we don't want to get in a tangent and break down sources of returns here. But uh, but what we do know is that if you look back on history, we may be looking at some depressed uh, returns, at least in the near term going forward. So what do we do? Uh, and it just goes back to your financial structure. You got to make sure that your essential uh, priorities are protected uh, in a way that they're going to be there and then allow for your long term investments to provide for those important and discretionary priorities. So, you know, I think that's where people need to to really focus their attention is on, you know, on what the financial structure is and then make sure that they're taking all of that into account, because otherwise, uh, you know, I think you're focused far too much on trying to create some sort of return that may be a, appropriate or inappropriate for you. Uh, but really what you should be focused on are the outcomes uh, and the structure is going to help you get there. And, and oh, go yeah, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I was going to say in, in addition to that, as important and Brandon, your spot on that is the, the most important thing, focusing on the outcomes. Um, you, you have to realize as a part of that process, you you're not investing all of your money today at, at the market high, <laughs> right? You're you're investing over time as you accumulate a, a surplus savings from your earnings. Very, very few of us have the ability to just get all of your life savings on day one, time the, the tops of the market, put it in there, and then you know wait and see from there. It, it, and, and I think that's how we, again, going back to our, our monkey brains, right? We, we think about it when we see these headlines like, oh man, the Dow is at, at a record high. I don't want to invest today. Well, you're not investing all your money today. Maybe you're investing you know, a, a fraction of a percent of your long-term wealth, right? So you got to think about that long-term um, aspect that ties into the, the financial structure and focusing on the outcomes, in my opinion. And a, a lot of what you're saying brings me back to the way in which we make decisions, which is evidence-based long-term investing. Because the crazy thing about the, uh, the the stats are, and we'll get into this in a future podcast, is is lump sum investing better than dollar cost averaging? The short answer is uh, investing on a consistent basis over the long term is going to be the most important thing. But it is another key tenet for AWM is time in the market as opposed to trying to time the market. And we covered this last podcast. How many people are sitting on the sidelines right now that took their money out, whether it was in February and March, when really what their focus should have been financial structure, it should have been what tax loss harvesting opportunities do we have to make sure that we're maximizing our after tax returns. That was the appropriate decision that should have been made in February, March, but so many people actually took their money out of the market. And then once again, it surprises us this week, we finally have uh, our current president acknowledging that there will be a transition. What happened on Tuesday, the markets roared when we started to see this certainty. And so it's very hard to time what is going to go on, not only when to pull your money out, but when to get back in. And so one of the things I want to make sure we leave uh, you, the audience with is these are the key principles of what year in tax planning can mean for your portfolio beyond just what tax loss harvesting is. Would you guys uh, break that down for our listeners? Yeah, Eric, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different things that we're focused on from a tax perspective right now. I mean, we, we certainly don't have any more clarity on what's going to happen. You know, George is not going to be decided till January. Uh, we're going to have a split government. So it's tough to, to do some of the, uh, the planning, I think, that a lot of people are, are pointing out. But when you get back to the fundamentals, right, it's making sure asset locations in place, make sh making sure you're doing your tax loss harvesting um, and then running tax projections. I mean, it, it's funny. I had a conversation with another uh, financial planner uh, this week and uh, we were talking about individual 401ks and the differences between SEPs. And the comment back was, well, that's the CPA's job. Um, and unfortunately, I think in our world, uh, you can't look at it that way, right? It's something that as financial planners, as experts, it's it's what we have to be well versed on. If you're not getting that from your advisor, um, I question I question that a little bit and and try to find a planner who's well versed in the tax planning process, uh, especially as we head into the year end. And I think the other part about this is hopefully this isn't the first time <laughs> you've been thinking about it or your advisor's been thinking about it, right? This is something that you know Justin could probably hit on. We've been all year long 
we've been looking at opportunities and it's systematic. And when you look at it that way, it just gives you the opportunity uh, to really capitalize on those events. Yeah, right. It, it's controlling what you can control, right? Well, you're going to hear us say that time and time again. It, it, they're simple words, but they're super, super impactful and, and really core to, core to our beliefs. And to Brandon's point, right? So instead of just waiting uh, until the end of the year, we're, we're going to control when we tax loss harvest. We're going to control where we put um, tax inefficient assets within tax more tax efficient accounts. Uh, you know, so to Brandon's point in March this year, when we did see a pretty big correction in the market, we were doing our tax loss harvesting. Then we, we controlled what we could control. We took advantage of the market. We, we have a plan in place for pretty much any potential market environment um, that, that may come our way. We can't predict what is going to happen in Georgia. As an example, we don't know who's going to, who's going to take over the Senate at this point in time. And so trying to, to make a, a decision, an investing decision on that unknown right now doesn't really make prudent sense um, for, for us. So, so again, we have that plan in place to control what we can control when and if the markets provide opportunity for us to take advantage. And as being former professional athletes, one of the things that we talk a lot about internally is just how much we demanded of ourselves on the field from our expertise standpoint. And that's what we just encourage you as the, as the listener and the investors, just to demand more out of your professional team, that these conversations should be happening. If, if you are in the highest tax bracket, if you have 1099 income and you don't have an individual 401k set up or no one's talking to you about a backdoor Roth IRA strategy, it's a sign that you are not capturing the after-tax returns that you deserve, that you've worked hard for. And so we would say demand more out of your team because you demand the excellence of yourself. And uh, of course, head over to awminsights.com to access these show notes. Uh, if you haven't already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the newsletter, especially once the year turns over and we have more clarity on uh, on what's going to happen in Georgia and the Senate. We're going to be releasing some special reports around tax planning. And until next time, stay humble, stay hungry, and always be a pro. The information in this podcast is educational and general in nature and does not take into consideration the listener's personal circumstances. Therefore, it is not intended to be a substitute for specific, individualized financial, legal, or tax advice. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a final decision.